Good day and God bless you. and Welcome to the Bible reading in chronological order. Just such a privilege once again to be able to share this with you and just to go through the Word of God together. I know the Word of God is so rich and so beautiful and so bountiful that it's just such a privilege to be able to go through this together with you. We're still busy today in the book of 1 Samuel and we're going to be going through chapters 25 and 26. So we see that chapter 25 begins with the death of the prophet Samuel. Now there's not much said about the death of the prophet Samuel, although when we look at it in contrast to, to the story of his birth, it's quite, uh, you know, the, the birth of the prophet Samuel is recorded in quite a bit of detail, but we see now that his death is not, uh, is not spoken about that much. But don't worry, uh, this is not the last we're going to hear of the prophet Samuel. So, you know, uh, we'll, we'll, see, we'll see how uh, his story is not yet ended, if we can say it this way. But then we continue in the passage, and then we see that uh, David, uh, he, he sends a message to Nabal to give David and his men anything that he can. Uh, he, he's looking for food, he's looking for some supplies, whatever Nabal can spare, David is requesting this. But Nabal refuses, and he gives a very discourteous, very churlish answer, and this displeases David greatly. So David gathers his troop to go up and wipe out all the men in Nabal's house. But Abigail, who was the wife of Nabal, she rushes out to David, and she uh, pacifies him with her beautiful attitude and spirit. Now, Take note of her speech toward David. It is so beautiful. And you can just see a true heart of a woman of God there. The way she, the way she speaks to David, uh, she knows that he is the anointed of God. She knows he is called of God. She knows that he is a soldier in the army of God. And look at the way she just honors him in that regard. But then David tells her what he was planning to do to Nabal. And when she tells Nabal this, his heart gives up in fear. The Bible says he became like a stone. And after 10 days of him being like this, the Lord smote him. And then we see that David uh, hears about this. He rejoices in the Lord that the Lord is fighting for him. He also makes a proposal to, to Abigail to marry her. And then he marries Abigail. Now just take note as well, the son of David also is met with a bride with such a beautiful attitude, with such a loving heart, with such a respect and a desire for the anointed of God. Even though she was a spouse to another, yet we see that uh, she, is given, uh, she, she marries the son of David, the bride of Christ, if I can say it that way. But uh, this, is, this is just a beautiful passage, and just take note of that, and just uh, you, you can really enjoy this passage. Then we get to chapter 26, and we see that Saul again comes out to the hill of Hakila against David again. Even though he had sworn not to, not to fight with David again, but we see he's against David again. And then we read that David is given a perfect opportunity to kill Saul while Saul slept, and Saul's soldiers just were all asleep. And one of David's men that was with him was about to slay Saul when David stopped him and says, Destroy him not, for who can stretch forth his hand against the Lord's anointed and be guiltless? Now this is something that we really have to understand about David. When the Bible talks about a man after God's own heart, and then we see the mistakes that David made in his life, we think to ourselves, Oh, the Lord condones evil. The Lord does not condone evil, never does. But David had such a respect and an honor for the Lord, such an understanding of the holiness and the might of God, that David would never touch anyone that the Lord had anointed. This is so important and so good to see. It is the respect that David had for the Lord that was that heart that the Lord saw so beautiful. And that is so amazing. And so David, instead of killing Saul, he takes Saul's spear and crews. And when Saul's army awakes, he challenges them as to how they allowed potential harm to come to Saul. 
And Saul again gives David reprieve for sparing his own life. And that's where we're going to close it today in chapter 26. I pray that the Lord would bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you. May he give you peace as you enjoy the reading today. God bless you. Chapter 25. And Samuel died, and all the Israelites were gathered together and lamented him and buried him in his house at Ramah. And David arose and went down to the wilderness of Paran. And there was a man in Maon whose possessions were in Carmel. And the man was very great, and he had 3,000 sheep and 1,000 goats. And he was shearing his sheep in Carmel. Now the name of the man was Nabal, and the name of his wife Abigail. And she was a woman of good understanding and of a beautiful countenance. But the man was churlish and evil in his doings, and he was of the house of Caleb. And David heard in the wilderness that Nabal did shear his sheep. And David sent out ten young men, and David said unto the young men, Get you up to Carmel, and go to Nabal, and greet him in my name. And thus shall ye say to him that liveth in prosperity, Peace be both to thee, and peace be to thine house, and peace be unto all that thou hast. And now I have heard that thou hast shearers. Now thy shepherds which were with us, we heard them not. Neither was there aught missing unto them all the while they were in Carmel. Ask thy young men, and they will show thee. Wherefore, let the young men find favor in thine eyes, for we come in a good day. Give, I pray thee, whatsoever cometh to thine hand, unto thy servants, and to thy son David. And when David's young men came, they spake to Nabal according to all those words in the name of David, and ceased. And Nabal answered David's servants and said, Who is David, and who is the son of Jesse? There be many servants nowadays that break away every man from his master. Shall I then take my bread and my water and my flesh that I have killed for my shearers and give it unto men whom I know not whence they be? So David's young men turned their way and went again and came and told him all those sayings. And David said unto his men, Gird ye on every man his sword. And they girded on every man his sword. And David also girded on his sword. And there went up after David about 400 men and 200 abode by the stuff. But one of the young men told Abigail, Nabal's wife, saying, Behold, David sent messengers out of the wilderness to salute our master, and he railed on them. But the men were very good unto us, and we were not hurt, neither missed we anything, as long as we were conversant with them when we were in the fields. They were a wall unto us, both by night and day, all the while we were with them, keeping the sheep. Now therefore know and consider what thou wilt do. For evil is determined against our master and against all his household. For he is such a son of Belial that a man cannot speak to him. Then Abigail made haste and took 200 loaves and two bottles of wine and five sheep ready dressed and five measures of parched corn and an hundred clusters of raisins and 200 cakes of figs and laid them on asses. And she said unto her servants, Go on before me. Behold, I come after you. But she told not her husband Nabal. And it was so, as she rode on the ass, that she came down by the covert of the hill, and behold, David and his men came down against her, and she met them. Now David had said, Surely in vain have I kept all that this fellow hath in the wilderness, so that nothing was missed of all that pertained unto him, and he hath requited me evil for good. So and more also do God unto the enemies of David, if I leave of all that pertained to him by the morning light any that pisseth against the wall. And when Abigail saw David, she hasted and lighted off the ass and fell before David on her face and bowed herself to the ground and fell at his feet and said, Upon me, my lord, upon me let this iniquity be, and let thine handmaid, I pray thee, speak in thine audience and hear the words of thine handmaid. Let not, my lord, I pray thee, regard this man of Belial, even Nabal. For as his name is, so is he. Nabal is his name, and folly is with him. But I, thine handmaid, saw not the young men of my Lord, whom thou didst send. Now therefore, my Lord, as the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, seeing the Lord hath withholden thee from coming to shed blood, and from avenging thyself with thine own hand, now let thine enemies, and they that seek evil to my Lord, be as Nabal. And now this blessing which thine handmaid hath brought unto my lord, let it even be given unto the young men that follow my lord. 
I pray thee, forgive the trespass of thine handmaid, for the Lord will certainly make my Lord a sure house, because my Lord fighteth the battles of the Lord, and evil hath not been found in thee all thy days. Yet a man is risen to pursue thee, and to seek thy soul. But the soul of my Lord shall be bound in the bundle of life with the Lord thy God. And the souls of thine enemies, them shall he sling out, as out of the middle of a sling. And it shall come to pass, when the Lord shall have done to my Lord, according to all the good that he hath spoken concerning thee, and shall have appointed thee ruler over Israel, that this shall be no grief unto thee, nor offense of heart unto my Lord, either that thou hast shed blood causeless, or that my Lord hath avenged himself. But when the Lord shall have dealt well with my Lord, then remember thine handmaid. And David said to Abigail, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, which sent thee this day to meet me. And blessed be thy advice, and blessed be thou which hast kept me this day from coming to shed blood, and from avenging myself with mine own hand. For in very deed as the Lord God of Israel liveth, which hath kept me back from hurting thee, except thou hadst hasted and come to meet me, surely there had not been left unto Nabal by the morning light any that pisseth against the wall. So David received of her hand that which she had brought him, and said unto her, Go up in peace to thine house. See, I have hearkened to thy voice, and have accepted thy person. And Abigail came to Nabal, and behold, he held a feast in his house like the feast of a king. And Nabal's heart was merry within him, for he was very drunken. Wherefore she told him nothing, less or more, until the morning light. But it came to pass in the morning, when the wine was gone out of Nabal, and his wife had told him these things, that his heart died within him, and he became as a stone. And it came to pass about ten days after, that the Lord smote Nabal, that he died. And when David heard that Nabal was dead, he said, Blessed be the Lord that hath pleaded the cause of my reproach from the hand of Nabal, and hath kept his servant from evil. For the Lord hath returned the wickedness of Nabal upon his own head. And David sent and communed with Abigail to take her to him to wife. And when the servants of David were come to Abigail to Carmel, they spake unto her, saying, David sent us unto thee to take thee to him to wife. And she arose and bowed herself on her face to the earth and said, Behold, let thine handmaid be a servant to wash the feet of the servants of my Lord. And Abigail hasted and arose and rode upon an ass with five damsels of hers that went after her. And she went after the messengers of David and became his wife. David also took Ahinoam of Jezreel, and they were also both of them his wives. But Saul had given Michael, his daughter, David's wife, to Faltai, the son of Laish, which was of Galim. Chapter 26. And the Ziphites came unto Saul to Gibeah, saying, Doth not David hide himself in the hill of Hekilah, which is before Jeshimon? Then Saul arose and went down to the wilderness of Ziph, having three thousand chosen men of Israel with him to seek David in the wilderness of Ziph. And Saul pitched in the hill of Hekilah, which is before Jeshimon, by the way. But David abode in the wilderness, and he saw that Saul came after him into the wilderness. David therefore sent out spies, and understood that Saul was come in very deed. And David arose and came to the place where Saul had pitched. And David beheld the place where Saul lay, and Abner the son of Ner, the captain of his host. And Saul lay in the trench, and the people pitched round about him. Then answered David and said to Ahimelech the Hittite, and to Abishai the son of Zeruiah, brother to Joab, saying, Who will go down with me to Saul to the camp? And Abishai said, I will go down with thee. So David and Abishai came to the people by night. And behold, Saul lay sleeping within the trench, and his spear stuck in the ground at his bolster. But Abner and the people lay round about him. Then said Abishai to David, God hath delivered thine enemy into thine hand this day. Now therefore let me smite him, I pray thee, with the spear even to the earth at once, and I will not smite him the second time. And David said to Abishai, Destroy him not, for who can stretch forth his hand against the Lord's anointed and be guiltless? David said furthermore, As the Lord liveth, the Lord shall smite him, or his day shall come to die, or he shall descend into battle and perish. The Lord forbid that I should stretch forth mine hand against the Lord's anointed. But I pray thee, take thou now the spear that is at his bolster and the cruise of water, and let us go. So David took the spear and the cruise of water from Saul's bolster, and they gat them away, and no man saw it, nor knew it, neither awaked. 
for they were all asleep because a deep sleep from the Lord was falling upon them. Then David went over to the other side and stood on the top of an hill afar off, a great space being between them. And David cried to the people and to Abner the son of Ner, saying, Answerest thou not, Abner? Then Abner answered and said, Who art thou that criest to the king? And David said to Abner, Art not thou a valiant man? And who is like to thee in Israel? Wherefore then hast thou not kept thy lord the king? For there came one of the people in to destroy the king thy lord. This thing is not good that thou hast done. As the Lord liveth, ye are worthy to die, because ye have not kept your master, the Lord's anointed. And now see where the king's spear is, and the cruise of water that was at his bolster. And Saul knew David's voice, and said, Is this thy voice, my son David? And David said, It is my voice, my lord, O king. And he said, Wherefore doth my lord thus pursue after his servant? For what have I done? Or what evil is in mine hand? Now therefore I pray thee, let my lord the king hear the words of his servant. If the lord have stirred thee up against me, let him accept an offering. But if they be the children of men, cursed be they before the lord. For they have driven me out this day from abiding in the inheritance of the lord, saying, Go serve other gods. Now therefore let not my blood fall to the earth before the face of the lord. For the king of Israel is come out to seek a flea, as when one doth hunt a partridge in the mountains. Then said Saul, I have sinned. Return, my son David, for I will no more do thee harm, because my soul was precious in thine eyes this day. Behold, I have played the fool, and have erred exceedingly. And David answered and said, Behold the king's spear, and let one of the young men come over and fetch it. The Lord render to every man his righteousness and his faithfulness. For the Lord delivered thee into my hand today, but I would not stretch forth mine hand against the Lord's anointed. And behold, as thy life was much set by this day in mine eyes, so let my life be much set by in the eyes of the Lord, and let him deliver me out of all tribulation. Then Saul said to David, Blessed be thou, my son David. Thou shalt both do great things, and also shalt still prevail. So David went on his way, and Saul returned to his place. Chapter 27. And David said in his heart, I shall now perish one day by the hand of Saul. There is nothing better for me than that I should speedily escape into the land of the Philistines. And Saul shall despair of me to seek me any more in any coast of Israel. So shall I escape out of his hand. And David arose, and he passed over with the 600 men that were with him unto Achish, the son of Maok, king of Gath. And David dwelt with Achish at Gath, he and his men, every man with his household, even David with his two wives, Ahinoam the Jezreelitess, and Abigail the Carmelitess, Nabal's wife. And it was told Saul that David was fled to Gath, and he sought no more again for him. And David said unto Achish, If I have now found grace in thine eyes, let them give me a place in some town in the country, that I may dwell there. For why should thy servant dwell in the royal city with thee? Then Achish gave him Ziklag that day. Wherefore, Ziklag pertaineth unto the kings of Judah unto this day. And the time that David dwelt in the country of the Philistines was a full year and four months. And David and his men went up and invaded the Geshurites and the Gezrites and the Amalekites. For those nations were of old the inhabitants of the land, as thou goest to Shur, even unto the land of Egypt. And David smote the land and left neither man nor woman alive and took away the sheep and the oxen and the asses and the camels and the apparel, and returned and came to Achish. And Achish said, Whither have ye made a road today? And David said, Against the south of Judah, and against the south of the Jeromelites, and against the south of the Kenites. And David saved neither man nor woman alive to bring tidings to Gath, saying, Lest they should tell on us, saying, So did David, and so will be his manner all the while he dwelleth in the country of the Philistines. And Achish believed David, saying, He hath made his people Israel utterly to abhor him. Therefore he shall be my servant forever. 